Hey guys, it's Cameron Black with Fishing Addicts Northwest and God and Catching Guide Service. And today I've got a trolling setup that uses an inline flasher that is extremely effective for salmon. So starting with the rod and reel, we prefer longer rods that have you know, softer actions and that are heavy enough to handle large leads for when we're trolling in the bottom of the rivers or out in the ocean. One of my favorite rods that I prefer is the Lama Glass 1064 with a graphite handle. It has the right action that allows the salmon to still take the bait but yet can still handle leads up to 12 to 16 ounces. As far as mainline is concerned, I prefer a 50 to 65 pound braid. The thinner diameter allows the line to cut through the water with less drag. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to attach the main line to a bead chain. But before I do that, I'm going to add two beads with a swivel in between that's going to attach my weight dropper. Generally my weight dropper I prefer to be between about 12 and 14 inches long. However, if I'm fishing suspended or I'm fishing in you know, maybe a different fishery that requires like a three foot dropper, you can adjust that length accordingly. I also prefer the weight dropper to be a different color than the main line and the leader material I'm using. Just this way that when I tangle up, it's easier to decipher which line's which, so when I want to replace the leader I can, but since the weight dropper is only holding the lead, if it gets tangled or beat up or it, it has a risk of breaking, I'm not that concerned about it. Attached to the main swivel, I have 18 inches of 200 pound tuna cord or heavy monofilament that's crimped at each end. The reason why I'm using 200 pound here is because if this tangles and get, this won't get damaged, you know, unlike the weight dropper, which could break, that 200 pounds is going to withstand multiple tangles and still keep on fishing. This way, when the flasher tangles, I don't have to retie it every single time. At the bottom of that bumper, you're going to have a bead chain. Now, you can check Fishing Addicts Northwest for another tutorial on how to build these bumpers step by step. Uh, but for now, we're just going to continue on. And every time we have an inline flasher that's spinning, we want to make sure that we have quality bead chains or quality swivels at each end just to, just to prevent line twist. Bead chain to heavy clip, heavy clip to another bead chain, and the reason why we're going to hang the bead chain on the bottom of the flasher is so we can quickly attach our leaders just with another simple duo snap. Leader lengths can be anywhere between two and six feet depending on water clarity and like what type of species you're fishing for. You know, generally sometimes the coho tend to like baits a little closer to the flasher, or sometimes wary chinook, you know, prefer a bait that's a little further back from your inline flasher, especially in crystal clear water. So this setup here, I have a double hook herring rig. However, when you're trolling an inline flasher for salmon, you can use a prawn spinner, um, a super bait, a regular spinner, an anchovy, whole body herring, bladed herring, I mean anything that you would troll for salmon will work with this setup. Um, another cool little trick is by taking off your lead and leaving those duo snaps attached there. You can take your hook, just use that as a holder, and you can wrap this whole setup right around your reel for storage in the boat. And it keeps everything nice and in line. If you guys like what you see here, you can check us out at fishingaddictsnorthwest.com on Facebook. Also, Gone Catching Guide Service on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. And we'll see you guys on the water.